probably going to be a political situation. So mm. I don't care. I'd rather own U.S. dollars tomorrow. I have friends that are uh, some of the biggest art dealers in the world, and they do these Art Basel shows, yeah. right? And there's an Art Basel in Miami, there's an Art Basel in Hong Kong. And so in the last couple of years, this year in particular, my friend that sells all the fancy paintings, not one Chinese buyer this year, not one. Because And three money. years ago, it was, oh, yeah. they were selling them like hotcakes to the Chinese. But, so they can't get their money out and they're policing that very, very, But my very guess is a lot rigidly. of them put the money, as you said earlier, into Hong Kong, right? So mm -hmm. their first step was put it into Hong Kong real estate, right? Correct. You're outside of China, but you're Correct. still within China, China. Then you're free, you liquidate the property or whatever you do. And in theory, there's a rule of law in Hong Kong, right? Yeah. It's, it's still uh, a UK rule of law. Yeah. In theory. In theory, exactly, which we'll come a little bit onto in a sec. Yeah. Um, but I just have a feeling that that money is flowing out. Mm. So let's say they sell real estate, it's mainland money that's been there for 10 years. Yeah. It now finds its way out because they're looking for more security. So it, well, it, it goes to Vancouver, it goes to Sydney or wherever. Imagine if you're a Hong Kong family that has been there for generations. And let's say you've built wealth over time. You would have to be foolish. In, an, in a freely convertible market, you'd have to be foolish to leave it in Hong Kong dollars, mm. given the macroeconomic instability of Hong Kong. And what happens in a, in a peg where 36 years there's no volatility, right? No volatility begets no volatility until it doesn't. Absolutely. But if you look at the macro, if you had your entire wealth invested in Hong Kong dollars and Hong Kong stocks and bonds, and I sat and talked with you and explained to you how bad the macro is, and then you say, well, it's probably going to be a political situation. So mm. I don't care. I'd rather own U.S. dollars tomorrow and not, not be on the hook or at risk of my home currency collapsing. So let's talk a little bit about risk in terms of the risk to the people in Hong Kong. Because we talked about autonomy and we both kind of sniggered about autonomy in Hong Kong because it feels like, and from friends of mine in Hong Kong as well, and you've got friends in Hong Kong, that autonomy is going fast. Mm. So last night I had dinner with a friend that uh, just sold both pieces of real estate that he had there, and he moved his family to London. Oh, really? Gone. He grew up in Hong Kong, generational Hong Kong family. The moment that China started actually floating a proposal uh, to be able to extrajudicially grab someone off the streets of Hong Kong and take them to China without any court proceeding, that's scaring the Hong Kong, not only the Hong Kong elite, but the 85,000 Americans that live there. Yeah. Right. In the past, we all know that the that the MSS from China grabbed booksellers that were writing books about President Xi that he didn't like, and they came in the middle of the night, took him, and ripped him, ripped them back to China. That was kind of a a political uh, grabbing, and uh, everyone was up in arms about it. And there were four booksellers that went missing for a while, and then they they resurfaced at some point in the future, never to sell another one of those books again. Um, this is a different thing. Yeah. The proposal in the, in, the, in, the, in the manner in which it's stated today, and Carrie Lam's government is the one uh, making this proposal, so you know, she's not really democratically elected, right? She's chosen by President Xi the, to be the CEO of Hong Kong, and she's proposing this. And her proposal is, it, it states that there'll be a judicial review, i.e. if the crime that's, that is supposedly been committed by the fugitive, fugitive in quotes, is a crime also in Hong Kong, so let's choose murder, right? It's a crime in both places. Yep. If China calls the police station in Hong Kong and says, Raul committed a murder in China, arrest him and send him over here, the court says, the, their judicial review is, okay, is murder a crime here? Oh yes, it's a crime here, we've got it. The presumption is guilt. So there is no court process to determine whether or not uh, this is a political movement or not, or whether or not you actually committed a murder. So how can people like Li Kai-shing remain within Hong Kong? I think they have to leave. I think it's a real problem. I mean, my friends that are very well off are leaving. Now, if you remember, Nancy Pelosi just had a group of 10 delegates from Hong Kong here to the States two weeks ago and was very forceful with some language and said, you know, there are 85,000 Americans that live in Hong Kong and we are very concerned 
about the new proposals that are being floated in the uh, legislature at Hong Kong, in Hong Kong. Hmm. If this becomes law, more importantly, this it goes back to this word autonomy. The Brits' agreement with Hong Kong and the U.S. agreement with Hong Kong, for instance, the 1992 uh, U.S.-Hong Kong Policy Act, is re-ratified annually. So the State Department submits a report to the president, and then it's up to the president to either take the State, take the state Department's recommendations or do whatever he wants to do. If he determines that they are no longer sufficiently autonomous, we can treat Hong Kong as China. Well, that changes the entire complexion of Hong Kong's economy, meaning all of a sudden all the tariffs, all the restrictions, all the rules of trade that we engage with China on, we start treating Hong Kong that way. Today, Hong Kong is treated as its own sovereign. There are no tariffs. It's free trade, unabated free trade. And uh, as long as, again, they maintain that autonomy, we honor that agreement. If this law goes through, it is a clear violation of our policy act, and it's a clear violation of the Brits' agreement with Hong Kong. That in itself will force, you remember, you remember in 1995 during the tequila crisis? What yeah. happened, what precipitated the, the Mexican decline? What precipitated Thailand in 97? It's always one thing. It's always the wealthy lose faith or fear of the government, and they start moving their assets out. Yeah, Argentina was the same. That's what happens. Yeah. So if the wealthy, in Hong Kong either convert to dollars or start leaving, which I think both will happen, um, then, then Hong Kong's finished. So what do you think, how does, how does this play out? So we've seen the HKMA is running low on, on the on excess reserves. reserves. Yep. The currency is stapled to the limit, yep. so they're having to intervene almost every day. Correct. The US dollar as of today looks like it's breaking higher and is gonna get stronger, which will only put more pressure on this situation. Mm -hmm. How does it play out? What's what's going to happen in this? I mean, I really don't know. All I all I know is the pressure that is being applied is not a. This is not anomalous. It's not a one-off. It's not. Uh, they're just caught up in the in the tide of of people moving to dollars everywhere, and Hong Kong has none of its own problems. You're talking about the most levered developed economy in the world, with the most levered levered consumers in the world, uh, with the most expensive real estate in the world all of a sudden having a real problem. <laughs>